There was little Jeffrey Epstein wouldn't do to satisfy his lust for young women and girls. He spent millions masterminding a worldwide sex trafficking operation. A year ago, he was arrested and a month after that, died in custody. Investigators, though, refused to let this scandal go to the grave with him. They shifted their attention to his high-profile friends, among them Prince Andrew, who continues to dodge requests from the FBI for an interview. But now there's been a substantial breakthrough with the arrest of socialite Ghislaine Maxwell, accused of being Epstein's right-hand woman. She's been charged with multiple child sex offences and for the first time in a long time, the countless victims in this wicked saga are feeling relief instead of terror. <laughs> Little St James in the Virgin Islands is a picture-perfect playground for the super-rich. But it's never been seen like this before. This now abandoned island is the keeper of terrible secrets. There's something happening here. A place haunted by what went on here. At the hands of the now dead, Jeffrey Epstein, a man who knew no limits. On my own island, I can think the thoughts I want to think. I can do the work I want to do. I can see the score as I see fit. In 2003, as he told a reporter, this island was his world, run by his rules. I realise what I am. Uh, I'm very comfortable in my own skin. What I'm really free to do is I'm free to follow my own personality. And what a dark personality it was. Driven to sexually abuse countless young girls. His private sanctuary an isolated prison known as Pedo Island, where he would share the girls like prey with his rich and powerful friends. We weren't anything important to them at all. We weren't even a human being to them. We were just another toy to be passed around. And that's what they did. Jeffrey Epstein may be dead, but the fight for justice is not. Today we announced the arrest of one of the villains in this investigation. Just four days ago, Glenn Maxwell, the most wanted woman in the world, was found hiding out in New Hampshire. She ruined so many lives. She belongs in jail. You want to hurt kids? That's where you go. Epstein's number one co-conspirator finally arrested after a year on the run. Helped him exploit girls who were as young as 14 years old. She's repellent. She's truly evil. Now, a new criminal investigation on Epstein's Caribbean island exposes the true extent of this predator's shocking behavior. What happened on Little St. James, it was so horrifying. The actions were just reprehensible. And adds pressure on Prince Andrew, still hiding in the palace, refusing to be interviewed by the FBI. Prince Andrew has simply totally stonewalled. Of all Epstein's victims, it's the allegations of Virginia Roberts Jufre that has had the most fallout around the world. Amongst many others, she claims Epstein trafficked her to Prince Andrew three times. The first in London when she was 17, then once in New York, and the third and final time here in the Virgin Islands. Prince Andrew, close friends with Glenn Maxwell, denies the allegations. The third time that you were trafficked to him, were you alone with him? No, there, there were a lot of younger girls with us, and it was, um, it was very shocking. How many young women with you? I believe there were eight. Prince Andrew met Epstein through Maxwell, a British socialite, daughter of disgraced media baron Robert Maxwell. With Glenn Maxwell's arrest, how do you think Prince Andrew is feeling right now? Oh. <laughs> Prince Andrew should be panicking at the moment uh, because Glenn doesn't really care about anyone else but Glenn. It's all laid bare in her artwork. 
Maria Farmer is filling her canvas with the Epstein story, the bad and the ugly. For her, a story that started in 1995. It was then, as a gifted student at the New York Academy of Art, she met patrons Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. It makes me really sad because the only thing I did wrong was I went to the wrong graduate school. That's the only thing I did wrong. Jeffrey fell in love with Maria's art, bought her first major work, and hired her in 1995 to buy art for his New York mansion. During that year, she had a front row seat to what went on behind these closed doors and saw Ghislaine Maxwell in full flight. She would turn like that and like as school's getting out, she's like, I've got to get the new biles. I'm going to get the new biles. What did she mean by that? And, and what did you witness? So several times um, I was in the car with her and she would ask the driver to stop the car and she'd dash across to the school or the park or wherever she was going. And she would like write down her phone number for a child, a young girl. And then I'd see that child at the house and she'd say they're auditioning. You know, I found a model in the park. And I thought it was really strange because I did see a couple girls in braces and I've never seen a model with braces. Of course, it was a ruse. Epstein claimed to help manage Victoria's Secret and Maxwell was his eager model scout. Yes, yeah, so you take my shirt off, so I took my shirt off. Instead, as Maria unwittingly witnessed, Maxwell was happily procuring girls to feed Epstein's insatiable appetite for sex with teenagers and young women. You start getting a little excited a lot and you start touching himself. A compulsion Maria would soon experience firsthand. Gilan came in to get me one evening um, basically they brought me to the, uh, Gilan escorts me to Jeffrey's room and he's lying there and he goes, well, here, sit down, you know? And so right next to him, and then Gilan sits on the other side and they began assaulting me. But really while I was lying there the whole time, I'm thinking, my sister has been around these people. My sister was 16. She's been around them alone. Maria's fears were well-founded. Her younger sister, Annie, revealed she too was sexually abused by the pair. Maria went to the FBI. It was 1996, and she was the very first victim to officially report Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell to the authorities. But in a pattern that would be set in the decades ahead, her complaint was ignored. They just kept it all quiet, put it in the bottom drawer. And they were so dismissive that I just felt daunted and I stopped. But by going to police, Maria felt the full force of Maxwell's fury. Terrified, Maria went into hiding and gave up her art career. What sort of threats has she made against you? Originally, it started with things like, I'm going to burn your art and then I'm going to burn your career and then I'm going to burn you and the house you live in. And then it was, Oh, be careful crossing a street. You know, you can get shot in the back of the head. You know, they were threats against my life. And I told the FBI this. Do you reflect on how different life would be for so many women today if the FBI yeah. had investigated your complaints in 1996? Yeah. They, yeah. I think about it all the time. I do, and it hurts a lot. And I never had children because of it, because I didn't feel like they would be safe. Coming up, threats. He made no bones about that he could inflict harm. Lies. She wanted me to believe that she was Jeffrey's girlfriend. And bargains with prosecutors. It's a deal like none other that I've ever heard of. How Epstein and Maxwell. <laughs> she's repellent, way worse than I even understood. Did whatever they pleased. To get away with it makes me very angry. That's next on 60 Minutes. It's your soul you're selling. In July last it's year, the slippery mind. Jeffrey Epstein was finally arrested and charged with sex trafficking a minor. Epstein was arrested aboard his private jet. For years, he'd used his wealth and power to avoid the full brunt of the law. The charges allege that Epstein sexually abused young girls by enticing them to engage in sex acts for money. 
But finally, apprehended in New York, with bail refused and with no other way out, lawyer Brad Edwards believes Epstein killed himself in prison. Despite some speculation, he was murdered. I think once his bond was revoked, I think his world just crashed in and the only control he had left was over his life. So he took it. Hearing directly from a victim is the only way that anyone's really going to understand. Brad represents victims and describes Epstein as a genius sociopath, one of his most confounding and dangerous adversaries. He was charming, charismatic, funny. Uh, he made you want to like him. That's why he was able to access over 100 uh, young girls and do the kind of things that he was able to do. Yeah, you speak about his charisma and charm, but he, he sort of had a double whammy, didn't he? Because he was always implying threats that he could and would hurt you. He would make no bones about it, that he could uh, inflict harm, you know? Um, he, he might say, and I'll tell you what, if you keep prosecuting me this way, if you keep doing this, someone is going to get hurt. And so, clearly, it was a threat. You know, there's no other way to perceive it. But his, um, his delivery was as non-threatening as possible. I think they were in disguise. They were wolves in sheep's clothing. In the early 90s, the well-connected Christina Oxenberg, a member of the Serbian royal family and a cousin to the British royals, met Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, his alleged madam, now charged with procuring girls for him and sometimes joining in the abuse. She wanted me to believe that she was Jeffrey's girlfriend, but I knew that she wasn't, but she wanted that to be the, the storyline. How did you know she wasn't his girlfriend? Because she's not 12. <laughs> with Epstein's death, Maxwell went on the run. But Christina remembers the time when both Maxwell and Epstein were desperate to be seen. They were a perfect fit. They needed each other. They were both halves of a whole that they wanted to be. He had the money, she had the connections. Did you like Jeffrey Epstein? No, not at all. He was just a, a goomba from Queens. Um, call me a snob. But no, he was a typical greedy person who wants more than they already have. 66-year-old billionaire financier Jeffrey Epstein was in court today for allegedly engaging in sex trafficking crimes. How serious are these charges against Epstein, David? When Epstein's arrest last year made headlines, Christina was moved to call the FBI. So disturbed was she by what Glenn Maxwell had told her in private all those years ago. She was very cocky, and she told me that she had just got her helicopter pilot's license, and that as a gift, as a, to reward her, Jeffrey had bought her a helicopter. And I said, so dangerous. Why would you want to do that? And she said, well, because this way we have total control on privacy of who's doing, who's with us. And Maxwell let her in on another secret, this time about the infamous Lolita Express, their private plane used to transport young girls and high-profile friends, including Bill Clinton. She also told me in that meeting that the plane, the private plane that she and Jeffrey used, um, was wired for, for audio, video. Christina, at the time, were there any red flags for you? At that point, were you thinking, children are at risk here? Unfortunately, I did not have even the wherewithal to think of such tremendous evil, frankly. I just thought she was the sort of rancid personality. I had no idea we were dealing with true evil. Justice has long been denied in this sordid case. Why did you keep going back if you didn't want to go back? So scared. In 2005, an investigation started into Epstein for the sexual abuse of more than 40 young girls in Florida. I don't know what to do. I was what? afraid that he was going to harm my family. Prosecutors had the evidence 
and the opportunity to put this sexual predator away for life. Instead, Epstein negotiated a secret seedy deal. He'd plead guilty to the lesser charge of unlawfully paying for sex with a teenager, for which he'd serve just over a year in jail. In return, he was let off all other charges, and incredibly, his co-conspirators, including Glenn Maxwell, were given full immunity in Florida, but only for the crimes committed there between 2001 and 2007. It's a deal like none other that I've ever heard of. Now, the, the fact that not only was he able to get away with dozens, if not hundreds, of crimes, but also somehow get immunity for his co-conspirators, named and unnamed, is something that even the judges who have reviewed this case I've never seen. With her immunity deal in Florida, and a sense the criminal investigation had run cold, Maxwell settled into a luxury hideout, aptly named Tucked Away in New Hampshire. It seems Maxwell didn't count on being chased down for her crimes outside the immunity period. At her remote court hearing on Thursday, where reporters could only listen in thanks to COVID, Maxwell's disbelief could be heard. A very loud British woman screaming, why is this happening? How is this happening? How could this happen? And just crying her eyes out. Acting US attorney, Audrey Strauss. As alleged, starting in 1994, until at least 1997, Maxwell was among Epstein's closest associates and helped him exploit girls who were as young as 14 years old. Maxwell has been charged with multiple child sex abuse offences relating to the Epstein sex ring, as well as perjury for lying about it under oath. As the world played the Where's Galen guessing game, FBI investigators knew all along, waiting for the right time to strike. We've been discreetly keeping tabs on Maxwell's whereabouts as we worked this investigation. And more recently, we learned she had slithered away to a gorgeous property in New Hampshire, continuing to live a life of privilege while her victims live with the trauma inflicted upon them years ago. Haunted by that trauma, Virginia Roberts Dufre was not only abused by Epstein and Maxwell, but also trafficked by them, she alleges, to some of the most powerful people in the world. Virginia is now married and lives in Queensland, from where she runs the Victims Refuse Silence Foundation. News of Maxwell's arrest makes this a good day. This day to me has been like one of the best days of my life. I have not stopped smiling and crying happy tears. And I'm just, yeah, I, I'm elated to know that she's where she belongs. She is the most narcissistic, evil, vain woman I've ever known. And she's finally been knocked off her pedestal. Coming up. The actions were just reprehensible. No escape. These young girls subject to sexual assault, sexual exploitation. From an island hill. Help us victims get some accountability. The women refusing to give up. I'm very proud of myself for standing up. And what now for the Playboy Royal? The Department of Justice feels Prince Andrew has simply totally stonewalled. That's next on 60 Minutes. Jeffrey Epstein's paradise getaway in the Virgin Islands may now lie abandoned and desolate, but it holds the secrets of a sex ring even more extensive than first thought. Once you get on that island, how do you get off? The Attorney General of the Virgin Islands, Denise George, paints a terrifying picture of what confronted the young women who found themselves trapped here. It's not like a person who's there and needs help that they can sneak away and run outside and flag down a police car. There is now evidence that Epstein's year in a Florida jail back in 2007 did not stop him from sexually abusing young girls. It's alleged he did so until a year before his death here on the Virgin Islands. 
these young girls and women were subject to sexual assault, sexual exploitation um, through coercion, false imprisonment, um, where the passports at some points were taken away. And it was quite a number of women, at least up to 2018, that continued. And that is the jaw-dropping aspect of this, isn't it? So what your investigation is showing is the broad scope of Jeffrey Epstein's nefarious activities, that it just kept going. Based on the evidence that we found thus far. And then there's the FBI investigation out of New York, which snared Ghislaine Maxwell. It still has its sights on Prince Andrew. Virginia Roberts Dufre has long maintained she was trafficked to the prince by Epstein. She says she met you in 2001. She dined with you. She danced with you. And she went on to have sex with you in a house in Belgravia belonging to Ghislaine Maxwell. Didn't happen. It's a claim the prince famously denied in this car crash interview with the BBC last year. I, I, I have no recollection of ever meeting her. She was very specific about that night. Mm. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating <laughs> and that she went on to have bath, there's a, there's possibly... A, there's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat um, or I didn't sweat at the time. And that was, oh, was she? Yes, I didn't sweat at the time. Prince Andrew is likely sweating right now. With her arrest, there's speculation Maxwell will reveal all the dark and dirty secrets, naming all the men who were party to them. In the event that she were to become a cooperator, I think that we can, we can deal with that. I really hope she comes forward and says, A, B, C, D, E was involved. This is how it ran. You, you know, just, just help us victims get some accountability. Last month, the Duke of York's legal team released a statement claiming he was cooperating with the FBI investigation. The Duke of York has on at least three occasions this year offered his assistance as a witness to the Department of Justice. In turn... Today, Prince Andrew yet again sought to falsely portray himself to the public as eager and willing to cooperate. The US Department of Justice released its own statement denying Prince Andrew was telling the truth. According to Virginia's lawyer, David Boys, this is an extraordinary step. It's very significant in terms of the extent to which the Department of Justice feels Prince Andrew has simply totally stonewalled. What is the end game here in terms of getting Prince Andrew before the Department of Justice? They want to interview him as a witness, as somebody who was present uh, at the sex trafficking, somebody who was close to um, Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, the second thing that they obviously are going to look at is Prince Andrew as a participant. Just for the record, you've been on his private plane? Yes. You've been to stay on his private island? Yes. You've stayed at his home in Palm Beach? Yes. You visited Gellin Maxwell's house in Belgravia in London? Yes. Epstein's luxury properties on the island in Paris, New York, New Mexico and Florida are where so many girls were abused, where many of them say they were recruited by Ghislaine Maxwell the and the other co-conspirators. Everybody needs to be held accountable that was involved with Jeffrey Epstein and, and all the crimes they committed. Courtney Wilde was just 14 when she became trapped in Epstein's abusive web. For the past 12 years, she's been fighting in the courts to make him and all co-conspirators answerable for their crimes. I feel like I'm fighting against the biggest, baddest people in the world. But in the long years since Epstein's arrest and death, his victims have just been offered some compassion, now able to seek compensation without the pain of lengthy court cases. Do you have any idea yet of how many women will claim and, and what sort of figures we're talking about as individual payouts? My expectation is that it's probably somewhere in the range of 50 to 100. I, I, think, I think you're certainly talking about a million dollars or more. The recoveries are going to be quite substantial. 
In a move that has shocked and appalled many, Glenn Maxwell has also staked a claim on the Epstein estate, demanding it pick up her legal bills. I'm like, what? She's doing what? Um, I just can't even believe she has the balls to do something like that. She basically conspired with him, and the fact that she would come back for money after he's passed, it's just offensive. Things would have been very different for Courtney if she had not been hurt like this. Would have been very different for Virginia if she had not been hurt like this. These are very sweet people that have a lot of creativity and they're very smart. Don't look back now. As women, Maria Farmer, Courtney Wilde, and Virginia Roberts Dufre are fighting against the unthinkable crimes done to them as teenagers. What can stop her? With Epstein dead and Maxwell potentially facing more than 30 years in jail, that fight now turns against the other co-conspirators who enabled Epstein to inflict his monstrous acts on the most vulnerable. At the end of the day, I'm very proud of myself for standing up to somebody like him and um, putting up a fight regardless of who he was. Is this the end of the Epstein story? This is just the beginning. There were so many women in Epstein's orbit that participated, procured, and benefited from Epstein's sickness. Jeffrey was dirty. He was sick. He was a pedophile. He's gone. Gillen, she is the wicked one. And these women with her, they deserve the same punishment. They deserve to be taken down as well. So just the beginning. Just the beginning. Yeah. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.